Hey, it's your pal Mike Shea from Sly Flourish, here with another episode of Sly Flourish's Lazy DM Prep. This is a weekly show shot 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Times on Twitch, in which I go through steps from Return of the Lazy Dungeon Master while preparing for my Sunday D&D game. In this case, we are running the D&D hardcover adventure Rime of the Frost Maiden. Uh, this is our actual first session. We had a session zero last week, and I'll talk all about that. And uh, today is the actual first session of the game. This show, like all of the work of Sly Flourish, is brought to you by the Patreon, the patrons of Sly Flourish. You can become a patron of Sly Flourish by going to patreon.com slash Sly Flourish and becoming a member. Uh, patron subscribers to Sly Flourish get access to all kinds of exclusive material, as well as helping support shows like this. We actually just put up a new, uh, a new first level adventure for Patreon, for Patreon supporters of Sly Flourish uh, called The Vault of the Dread Siphon. Uh, it is a fun, short easy to prep, easy to run first level adventure for D&D that I intended to be a, a quick adventure that you could grab with some pre-gens and some friends and play some D&D. Uh, it is only available to Patreon backers. So if you would like access, you can do so by going to patreon.com and, and joining up. A lot of people just joined up and I'm very excited to, uh, to offer the material there. Uh, so yeah, we had our session zero and it was awesome. Uh, it was a really good, uh, it was a really good time. And uh, we are, I'll, I'll, I'll talk all about it um, as we're going through our notes today. And I guess what I can do for, so what, what we can do, because I think it'll help about like, how did the session zero go? So let me go back to the session zero uh, notes here and uh, talk a little bit about what happened during each of these steps that we did. So I gave out the one pager and we talked about it. That went smooth. Everybody got it. Uh, we talked about lines and veils. Uh, that worked well. It also was very important that I said, by the way, if you have anything else you want, one of the players did. And uh, they brought up a, a thing that we put on the lines and veils. And we said, good, that, that we, we know that that's an issue. And it was a pretty, it was, it was you know, it's, it's something that would not be on any list. I don't, I don't want to get into it because I don't want to get into people's personal stuff. But it was something that would never be on any, any list. So the idea that like you can make a checklist of all of the things is really impossible because you never really know what exactly is going to uh, cause someone a lot of discomfort at a game or why or what happened. So it's better to uh, just avoid, you know, just just leave it open, let people bring up what their issues are and make sure that they go on the on the line and veil list and that they are that they are off. So that worked really well. Uh, they selected a group patron. Uh, they were very, you know, I, I say this uh, because sometimes they're not, but most of the time they are. They made a very mature decision about their patron, which is they recognized the theme of the adventure. And they also recognized that two of the four patrons weren't really built around that theme. The theme was a means to an end for them rather than a goal. And so then it really came down to two others. Uh, let's pull up the uh, one pager. Uh, so we had Valen Harpel, Sheriff Markham Southwell, uh, Lynn Trollbane, and Danica Graysteel. And during their conversations about the group patron, they said, well, uh, Valen, she seems shady. So we're not sure we want to work for her. And Danica, they're like, we like Danica, but her goal really isn't to help the people at Ten Towns. It's to find out what's going on with the crazy, uh, the crazy nature of, of, of Icewind Dale. And she's just helping the people at Ten Towns out to, to kind of follow that goal. So, you know, eh. and they're like, we don't like the lawful good Sheriff Markham Southwell. You know, we're not really just in there to be the city, the, the city's, the city's um, people. So they they picked Helen Trollbane. They said we like her, right? She's she's you know she's tough. She's a good mercenary. Uh, she's good a good bounty hunter, but she she's you know neutral good. She wants to help the people at Ten Town survive the endless night. That's her goal. Very Harper like in in their strike. So they picked Lynn, and I liked why they picked Lynn, which is that she supported this concept that the characters are together to help the people of the Ten Towns survive the icy dangers of the Endless Night. Awesome, it makes it really easy for me as a DM. That that served its goal really really well, right? Like it, it it gives me a group patron, it gives me a way to give them quests, and it focuses around the goal of the quests that are in in the adventure. Uh, we chose character secrets that worked really well. Uh, we did it before the characters were built, which was a major benefit. I highly recommend you give the character secrets out or talk to, about character secrets with them before they build a character so they can build a character around it. And we'll talk about the secrets that everybody picked. Um, they built their characters together. Took a long time, a lot of kind of going back and forth. I gave them the optional Icewind Dale backgrounds, and I, I can't remember if they took it or not. We sort of did these three steps, the building the characters, choosing the backgrounds, and doing the trinkets. We did them all simultaneously. As soon as people were ready for a trinket, we'd roll on the trinket table and they'd get a trinket. Um, that was kind of interesting. It wasn't the, you know, it wasn't crazy. 
So that was the bulk of it. That probably took, you know, 90 minutes or, or a couple hours to build characters, choose backgrounds, and get their trinkets. Uh, but we did all of those. Uh, and then we ran the first adventure where they face ghouls. Uh, I learned something important about ghouls. Ghouls are really underpowered for their challenge rating. I would say that they're really a CR one half monster. And you can probably run one ghoul for every two first level characters and be okay. So if you had two or three characters, one ghoul is about right. If you have four characters or five characters, two ghouls is right. Six characters, you probably want three ghouls because they, they beat those ghouls into the ground with no problem at all at first level. And it's because the ghoul really only has one attack, right? It's, it's not a lot of hit points, low AC and one attack. So the only reason why CR1 is because it can paralyze you on a hit, but it, it's not going to happen that often if they're not getting a lot of attacks. So I would probably have, run, I wish I had run one more ghoul just to make it a little bit, because it's the only fight and they already got level two. I think they should have had a little bit of a harder fight. I know that like, you know, we want to be very careful at first level and we should. So I'd rather do that than too, you know, too many than too few, too few than too many. But I, one more ghoul would have been good. So if you're ever running ghouls, consider them more CR one half than CR one. So that was how the session zero went and it worked really well. I was very pleased. Uh, the one complaint I got was that by the end of the game, even though they were in the middle and doing the fight, they felt like, oh, I don't really know who the other characters are. Like, we've never really had them described because they're building them. But they're like, at the end, they don't really know what they ended with. So I said, don't worry. The beginning of this first session, we're gonna that's what we're going to focus on. So that's actually a really good idea for the strong start of, um, of this game. So uh, I'm going to grab the session zero, and I'm going to stick in old session notes because I no longer need it. Because uh, we're no longer doing session zeros for this. Uh, and I'm going to generate, I'm going to click on generate session planning template. Uh, as always, I'm using Notion for my campaign notes here. Uh, if you're not familiar with how I use Notion, there are notes in the show notes below. There are notes here on Twitch. Uh, you can learn all about it. You can also get access to my Rhyme of the Frost Maiden notebook here. So you can see this stuff as I'm doing it. You can go watch in Notion and see me updating it, which is really weird. Uh, but you can do it. And uh, I love Notion for campaign stuff. Uh, I love to add these like big pictures so it looks cool. Like, look at that cool picture. I didn't, I just noticed that's a big face. That's cool. Uh, so our strong start is uh, going around the fireplace. Who are the characters? What do they look like? Why are they here? What do they want? So you want like icebreaker questions, right? And and I think I think these are good ones. Like, you know, who are you? What do you look like? Why are you here in Icewind Dale? Sort of why or how did you get here? And and what is your what is your goal, right? Remembering again, you want to reinforce that whatever your goal is, remember that your overall goal here is to help the people of Icewind Dale survive the endless night, right? So so that's not bad. Um uh the um black iron dwarves come to uh the north look uh black iron dwarves come to the north look in we have some npc let's let's look at our npcs uh i have a big npc database already boy notion is acting a little slow today lots of cool stuff uh herna herna black iron so I'm kind of making up a thing. Um, I'm making up a thing, which is the Black Iron Dwarves. Uh, I'm making them the Black Iron Dwarves. I don't think Herna and his brothers are actually members of the Black Iron Dwarves, but I'm making them such so that if you if you look at uh, Bryn Shander, uh, if we go to 10 Towns and we go to Bryn Shander, let's go to our table of contents here. Um, they really only identify like three locations in Bryn Shander. Town Hall, I guess they got a few few places, but not, not a lot of them, right? But one of them is Black Iron Blades. And Black Iron Blades is a, a shop and smithy. Uh, Garn the Hammer uh, manufactures the cheapest blades in 10 Towns. Sister Elza uh, sells adventuring supplies, right? I'm instead going to change the Black Iron Blades uh, that the dwarves that come from Kelvin's Karn are, uh, they are actually the Black Iron Dwarves, right? They, they're, they're named, they're back, they're, their name is Black Iron. And... They're the ones that need the iron. So if you help them with this first quest, you suddenly have a benefit at this place. You you just made your right, very first quest. You just made the city better. So that's that's something that I'm doing here. Is I'm I'm replacing the people that are here with 
her and a black iron and the other one so that they've meet an NPC. They do a quest for the NPC to help the NPC. Now that anytime they'll, they'll her and they'll run into all the time. Uh, I think that can really work. Yes, he's not your problem. Brings up that uh, there are other locations of Bryn Shander in Legacy of the Crystal Shard. There are also more locations. If you want to fill out Bryn Shander, uh, you can do so with Storm King's Thunder. Yeah, if you go to, uh, let's see. Uh, if you go to Adventures and you go to Storm King's Thunder, uh, Storm King's Thunder also has uh, Bryn Shander. And they have many more locations described here, uh, including one that's really important, which is for me, which is the House of the Triad. <clears throat> the House of the Triad is I'm going to turn into a ruin, a ruined temple that has been taken over by the Cult of Oral. So that is going to be, uh, in fact, I, if I haven't made a location for that yet, I really should. So let's go to locations and let's see if I made one. Uh, I did. Okay. Very good. So there is already a House of the Triad. Uh, I just haven't done anything with it yet. So I'm going to make a location. And we will um, add new information to that as we as we do it. Uh, I'm always curious if it was tea or coffee. It is coffee that I drink. Uh, it is French press, French press coffee that I make myself with lots of cream. Because I like my weak, milky coffee. <clears throat> so uh, let's see. Oh, I got to rename this, right? Let's rename the template to uh, 21 Sunday Frost Maven. Great. Um, so they meet. It's pretty, This is really straightforward. Like this session is going to be a really straightforward session. <clears throat> um, they uh, meet. So uh, the scenes, let's break out our scenes. Uh, we are going to have... Go uh, around the campfire. Who are the characters? Uh, then meet Herna. I'll link again. Why not? And get the quest for uh, the foaming mug iron. All right. Pretty straightforward. Uh, then they go on the quest. Uh, they... Um, well, we might we might pull a random encounter for fun. <clears throat> As a vocalist, cream and dairy is not good for a performance. Ah, that's a bummer. I'm still drinking my coffee. Um, we go on a quest. They go on the quest. Uh, we'll probably have a random encounter on the way out. Uh, return to Bryn Shander and uh, good deals at. Um, Black Iron at the Black Iron Smithy. So that is, you know, very straightforward. Do you use random encounters often? I do. I like to, I like random encounters. Uh, I think there's some interesting ways you can use random encounters to, to make things. It doesn't always have to be a fight. Uh, and a lot of times you could like roll a random encounter to see tracks of things. So like you could roll Yeti on the random encounters and instead they see the results of a Yeti that had been here. Um, so you don't have to turn it into a fight all the time. It could just be something they, they run into along the way. Uh, we'll probably roll a random one up just for fun. So those are the scenes. So now we have some secrets and clues. So what are the, what are the secrets and clues, um, that we want to, we want to let out? So, uh, the children of oral. Uh, have convinced many of the people of 10 towns to sacrifice their heat, food, and lives to Oral. Um, <clears throat> speaker, speaker Duvessa Shane um, abhors the sacrifices, but feels she must serve the people's will and recognizes the thin or the, yeah, the thin ice <laughs> um, she stands on uh, between 
civilization and chaos. She's afraid if she acts against the, the, the children of Oral directly, uh, she could cause riots, right? That, like mo most of the people of 10 towns think that the sacrifices are beneficial, that they help. They want something. And she's like, I don't have anything to offer them. Um, so that that's something that goes on. Uh, there have been multiple murders across 10 towns, including the speaker at Goodmead. The bodies were found the same way the body was found in Bryn Shander. Um, yeah, we could also, they returned to Bryn Shander, good deals at the back end, and there's been another murder. Uh, what other secrets do we need to throw out there uh, in this session? Um, anything strange that these, well, we could say a comment was seen streaking across the sky to the south about a 10 day ago. <clears throat> That's kind of a fun one. Uh, so then we have sort of, I guess other secrets and clues, we can jump to those, um, those, those rumors. So these are really the quests that they get next. Oh, uh, that's Storm King Sunday. That's not what I'm running. Uh, adventures, Frost Maiden, Icewind Dale, Rhyme of the Frost Maiden. Uh, dink. Uh, so then we have the three quests that I want um, to drive to the next ones. And I, those three quests are in good mead, uh, but I'm changing this one. So good mead, town speaker was assassinated, was murdered. Um, so I think we'll skip the murdered part. Um, and we'll just go with the rumor. Uh, a giant stole a shipment of honeymead without which a handful of taverns and 10 towns might go dry. So that's one quest. Uh, then I'm gonna grab the quest from Dugan's Hole. Um, people live in fear of huge wolves that haunt the outskirts of town. Uh, as big as horses. How big is a, uh, a dire wolf? Is a dire wolf as big as a horse? They're pretty big, but I don't think they're big as a horse. What 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 good? Ah, sure. We'll go with we'll go with horses. As big as horses. The main thing is I'm changing them from winter wolves to dire wolves because winter wolves are just too. They're too nasty at first level or at second level. Um, in good mead, let's see. Uh, and then the third one is, uh, uh, let's see. In Bremen, fishers are being terrorized by a monster that lives in Mir uh, Dwaldon. Strange that none of the other towns in the lake have been uh, harangued by the monster. So those are the three big quests for the next. Um, uh, yeah, Evil John tells Moose Jaws. So we're gonna we're definitely I, I definitely want to run Moose Jaws. Uh, I guess uh, famed director Kevin Smith wanted to do a version of Jaws that was about a moose, and um, I think that that is good. Uh, I have I have really fun ideas for moose jaws. 
So uh, I want to run Jaws with a moose. We're going to need a bigger um, hunting platform. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I need three more secrets. What are three more things the characters could learn that sort of steer them, uh, steer them out? Uh, it's been two days since the last sacrifice. Poor, uh, I need a random name. I think there was like a name. Uh, let's see. Oh, so one of them is, I got a couple, I got definitely got some rumors. Yeah, I, I guess it's gonna be called antlers. Um, and what were Michelle and I were talking about, moose jaws. Yeah, antlers would make sense, right? Like, which fits, but moose jaws sounds so much better. Because you know exactly what it is. You can see you gotta close all these windows up. Uh, so let's go to Bryn Shander. Because I wanna see who, I think they named who it was. Uh, I guess they didn't describe who it was. Does anybody remember if they named uh, the sacrifice? Uh, if not, I am going to have to come up with my own. Go to names, and it was uh, Amos, Amos Donhart, Amias. Uh, poor Amias Donhart was uh, selected and bound to the dead tree north of Bryn. <clears throat> I guess it'd be to the south of Bryn Shander. Uh, let's take a look at the map, see where it would have been. Uh, da -da. Maps, Icewind Dale map, nice big Icewind Dale map. Whoops. Big Icewind Dale map. Do, 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 do. Where were they? Where would the sacrifice come from? So Bryn Shander, probably to the, well, they're right in the town. West? East? Probably to the southwest, right? The Ten Trail. Um, um, now, last time, uh, let me let me pull up my notes for the last session. Uh, so that would have been this is the other Sunday, fourteenth, and. NPCs. So we have this guy. Um, yeah. So these these are two NPCs. Uh, Guy's Gray Lion. Um, put them under NPCs. Uh, And then we have a, I'm gonna open up a new tab. Uh, session notes and Sunday. Da, 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 da. Brother Lowell. So, uh, Uh, Guy's Grey Lion paid off Brother Lowell of the Children of Oral to remove his token from the lottery. Uh, and both of them were killed. Uh, uh, killed the same way. Were killed with keen, icy blades. Um... And then the final rumor is that bronze is it uh, uh, bronze? What's the name of the? Uh, so if we're gonna add some, this is a tricky bit. I don't. I'm I'm kind of stuck with how to do this. Um, and one way is that that uh, torgs, right? So there's um, uh, traveling, uh, and what are they? Um,
uh, Torgs is a uh, traveling merchant, a traveling merchant caravan, right? Uh, so, so what I want to do is I want to leave a trail that Sephic Caltro is leaving behind, uh, b behind in the murders, right? Um, so here's the story, full spoilers. Uh, Sephic Caltro is a, is a sort of, uh, a true child of Oral right? He has cold resistance. He can form icy blades and he is sort of the quiet follower of Oral's will. And he is sort of watching the inside of the sacrifices. And if people are cheating, he will murder them uh, for her will. He sort of sees himself as an extension of her will. And uh, so he murdered two people in Bryn Shander, uh, Guy's Grey Lion, and Brother Lowell. And he killed them both because they cheated at the lottery. He also killed the... Um, so I think this is the way I'm going to do it. Uh, he also killed the Speaker of Goodmead because he wouldn't sacrifice the mead that they made to Oral. He refused to give it up. They, they The church, the, the, the children of Oral said, you have to give up, you know, 20% of your mead. You have to, you know, and they, and he said, no way, that's too much. And he wouldn't do it. And then they said, fine, you know, it's your, you're, you're going against Arl's will. And they like, they kept an eye on him. And the next thing you know, he's dead. He's murdered. I think that probably happened before Bryn Shander's murder. So, uh, came from, uh, uh, came from good mead. Uh, and left today for another town. What what other town might it have left for? Um, so what I'm trying to do is paint a path so that if they, they can, I want them to figure out that whoever is doing these murders is traveling with the Torg's, with, with Torg's, uh, 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 with Torg's journey. So uh, he's not your problem, says East Haven. Um, that could be. I want to make sure that I'm steering them towards uh, quests that they might pick up. So what are the, with the three quests? We have Dugan's Hole, we have uh, Bremen, and we have um, Goodmead. So we already know about Goodmead. So maybe Bremen? Um, why do you say East Haven? He's not your problem. Or are you just picking one? Uh, and what are the quests? Let's look at the quests and see which quests work well. Uh, uh, Goodmead and Dugan's Hole are on the road to East Haven. Yeah, that works. Well, except he would have come from Goodmead. So maybe he, um, maybe he went from East Haven Maybe he came from they 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 went to Dugan's Hole. Maybe somebody was murdered at Dugan's Hole too. Uh, oh, is there a chart, a chart where that says where they're headed? No, I think you're supposed to make it up, aren't you? Uh, let's take a look. Uh, getting a quest. Let's see. Three cold blood murders have committed in the past month. Uh, a halfling trapper in East Haven, human shipbuilder in Targos, and three days ago, a gla dwarf glassblower in Bryn Shander. Each victim was found with a dagger of ice through the heart. What's the connection? The drunken lot huddled uh, in tavern offers no credible ideas, but sitting apart from them is an elderly dwarf with a nasty scar. She's been smoking her pipe. Um, you can randomly determine the location of the merchant company by rolling a D10 because it's only a starting town. Roll again and, and if it's a, uh, conversely. For Gullo and uh, pick Bremen and Dugan's Hole are good choices because they're small and isolated. So uh, let's go back to our map here. Let's see. So I think that like I, they're probably headed to Targos, right? And then Tourmaline. 
because they just came. So they let's say they started off in Bryn Shander. I'm sorry, in Dugan's Hole. They went to Goodmead. He murdered somebody there. They probably He probably murdered someone a few days ago in Dugan's Hole. Uh, went to Goodmead, murdered somebody there. Then to Bryn Shander, murdered two people there, uh, and now is headed to Targos, and then Tourmaline, and then Lonelywood. Right? And then we'll probably come back through again. So I'm going to say Targos. Um, or Targos, Bremen. Yeah, Targos and Bremen. Um, Torx Traveling Merchant came from Goodmead, uh, came from uh, Dugan's Hole. Um, through Goodmead. Uh, to Bryn Shander and left today for Targos and Bremen. That works. I think that's good enough because like they're not, I don't know, if, you know, we're going to, I want them to be able to figure out the path. Uh, I don't want to make it too easy. Um, but it'd be, I want them to have the opportunity to sort of do the guide and be like, wait a minute. Um, I don't know. Targus is good because of those human sacrifices too. Yeah. Uh, so that's pretty good. I think I'm think I'm good on my secrets and clues. Uh, let's see. So I forgot to go through the characters. We need to go through the characters. So we're going to do that next. Can everybody hear me? Am I good? Okay. Thank you. So, uh, yeah, let's talk about our new characters. This is going to be exciting. I also don't think I updated the little Twitch thing so that you can see the character sheets. I should figure out how to do that sometime. Uh, so we have six characters. Uh, our first character is uh, Ilda. Uh, Ilda is a... Um, so she started off as a... Her actual name is uh, Jacqueline um, Mal Malicent. Uh, her parents are essentially the Malfoys from uh, Harry Potter. Uh, and have joined the Church of Oral and belong to the, the Church of Oral. She left and went off to kind of find herself and found out that she's actually half Goliath. Um, not, she's not, she, she, she's her, she, uh, uh, she, is, she is an illegitimate child of her mother, um, but, but didn't know it. And uh, in her, as she has matured, she has become more and more Goliath. She's all, she's super tall and all elbows. Um, she has met some of the other characters. She knows Hill, Tr Hill and Trollbane. My notes are really kind of, I'm going to have to fill in the notes a lot during, during the first part of our session. Uh, she knows Jay's character. I don't remember Jay's character's name. Uh, and uh, her secret is that she escaped the mark for sacrifice of Oral. So it's possible that she is being hunted by Sephic for this. Uh, the parents of the Malfoys is still part of the children of Oral. Uh, her her uh, trinket is a jar containing an unidentifiable sweet sticky substance, uh, and I have a token for her uh, for our for our game. So yeah, she's a fun character. I love the idea. I, I haven't yet figured out train skills and everything. I was going to let the players have a little bit of time to get their character set before I start putting all the information in, uh, but I will. I'm, I'm probably going to do that next. Uh, Auken Dawncaller uh, is also a Goliath, uh, and is I think this is Jay's this is Jay's character. Um, no, this is Pat's character. Sorry. Uh, he has a, his secret, boy, I have no information about him. Um, he has had dreams of a massive, strange black structure, uh, under the ice. Uh, he is, let's take a look at, um, DD Beyond and see what it says. Uh, male Goliath fighter. So just straightforward fighter. Very different from Pat. Pat normally plays spellcasters. So that'll be, that'll be interesting. Um... Uh, and we have uh, Shadowhawk. I found out that Shadowhawk is actually two words. Uh, probably a secret name. Whoops. Uh, Shadowhawk uh, is a drow from Menza Baranzin. Uh, probably a member of one of the, fam the houses there and escaped, being hunted by a noble family for a crime or slight you committed. So I'll have to find out which one of the noble houses of... Um, Menza Baranzin might be hunting him. But that could be lots of fun. I love the idea of drow assassins hunt, secretly hunting him. And his trinket is a glass unicorn horn. He's a drow sorcerer. Um, Brian loves playing spellcasters. I think he's played sorcerers before too. 
Uh, Gore uh, Wen Al Al Alcazar uh, is a. Uh, <laughs> I love his picture. <laughs> uh, he is a. Whoops. Uh, let's take a look at him. Uh, he is a half orc cleric, uh, and he is secretly so. Um, <laughs> uh, um, Joe always plays characters that are from one noble family, uh, and it, the first character I had that was in that noble family was in um, Waterdeep Dragon Heist, and this one, of course, is a child of that noble family. That is the um, damn. What's the name of it? I can't remember the name of it. But he's a secret heir. And the, the great funny thing is that everybody knows that Joe always plays characters from this noble family. So they are everyone already surely guesses that this guy is from is from there. Um, but it of course it's gonna be like the worst kept secret in the world. Uh those boots should add to his unarmed strike. Yeah, half our cleric. I forget which which type of cleric. Um let's see if we go to uh, features and traits. Uh, trickery domain. Cleric of the trickery domain. I knew it was kind of a fun one. That should be cool. So that's gore. Um, Perrin, Fat Rabbit, played by Jay. Uh, I, another awesome, <laughs> awesome picture. Uh, a, a halfling ranger uh, has hazy dreams of being kidnapped by an alien race and then crashed down in the ice. And has a set of wind chimes made from seashells. I believe that Perrin pulled off some crazy psionic stuff uh, in our last game. And so we're going to look at the features and traits. Because uh, he has, I thought he has like a, uh, he's fey touched. He has dissident whispers and misty step as a fey touched creature so something kind of woke him up and and gave him this sort of weird powers that like a druid shouldn't normally have or a, a ranger shouldn't normally have and he used dissident whispers on a um uh yeah failed save takes 3d6 psychic damage right he used it on one of the uh um he used it on one of the uh, ghouls and just destroyed it so fun. And so I, I love the idea that he's, I think he's been, I think the fun bit here is that he's been kidnapped by mind flayers and they did stuff to him. And that's why he's got this, these, these, these extra powers. I think the player is on board with that idea. Uh, and last is Candle in the Dark. Uh, Candle in the Dark is played by Jerry. Candle in the Dark is a tabaxi rogue. And has dreams filled with tentacle nightmares. So there's a lot of ties to the mind flayery sort of bits of this. Uh, has an owl figurine carved from whalebone, um, and just I think I think a straightforward. I we're 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 gonna and I, I definitely need to fill all this out. Like everybody's sort of building their backstories as they went. Yeah, isn't that your candle in the dark named Candle? Um, how and when did you dole out the secrets? I did it before they built their characters, and I did it through text chat. So I said, roll a number, and I will send you that through the Discord messenger. So they only saw the ones that they had, and they got them before they made their characters. So they were able to sort of build their characters and their characters' background around those, those secrets a little bit. So those are our characters today. And of course, the first thing we're going to do is learn more about these characters and sort of who connected them, which I think will be, which I think will be great. Uh, so let's go back to our notes. So we re reviewed the characters. Uh, we have our strong start. We know what's going on there. Uh, we have scenes. That's certainly enough. We have a whole big pile of secrets. We'll see how those go out. Uh, so, uh, other fantastic locations. So let's do a, let's go to my, uh, Frost Maiden. I need, uh, do I have Frost Maiden monuments? Let's see, other random generators. Uh, Icewind Dale relics. No, I need Icewind Dale. Let's see if I've got it per chance. I thought I made a password expired. If you're not familiar with per chance, it's an awesome way to make random, random generators. And I thought I had a Icewind, Icewind Dale monuments. Here it is. Okay, let's full screen that. So 
A cracked marble fossil of the tribe of the tiger. Metallic, crystalline, pristine meteorite of oral. Floating poisonous altar of the frost giants. Buried thunderous statue of oral. Um, that one might be kind of fun. I don't know about making a thunderous statue. Uh, foggy ruined fossil of the tribe of the bear. Yeah, that one. That one's good too. We'll we'll, we'll, we'll take both of these. Uh, glowing pristine skull of Umberly. Thunderous thunderous archway. <laughs> thunderous archway of oral ruined ornate altar of Tamora. That's cool. Um. Buried ivy-covered skull of oral. Poisonous glowing pillar of illithids. Some of these are pretty good. So I'm going to grab a few of these and we'll make some modifications to them. Uh, so these are these are just sort of... Oh, come on. Turn into bullet list. Uh, a buried statue of oral is good. A foggy ruined fossil uh, of the tribe of the bear. Um, what would the fossil be? Let's say a totem. Uh, glowing pristine skull of Umberly. Don't need that one. Thunderous, thunderous archways. Hungry, hungry hippos. Ruined ornate altar of Tamora. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Buried ivy colored skull of a frost giant. Frost Titan. So what are those? Those are backdrops for random encounters. I just sort of keep them handy. Um, and uh, I just want to have them so that if I'm running some random encounters, I've got some things to do. Uh, and so monster-wise, we know they're going to face some goblins. And we'll look, one of the last things we'll do here is we'll, we'll look at the actual quest because we haven't even looked at it yet. Uh, but we know we're going to have goblins. Um, and then probably some kind of random thing. So let's go, uh, let's see, I don't need that characters are open up uh don't need that don't need that don't need that uh let's go to so they i wish that they had random encounters around 10 towns like that would have been really nice but they don't uh they do have wilderness encounters in icewind dale and that will serve uh it's a d20 list so it's not particularly long but let's just roll a couple of times and see what we see see what see what grabs us Uh, so one is a Yeti. I always like a Yeti. So we'll have Yeti tracks, right? Um, so one of the random encounters could be Yeti tracks around, um, let's see if we did this as, um, Yeti tracks around a buried statue of oral would be pretty cool, right? So we can do that. Um, and a slaughtered, something slaughtered, a person? So Yeti tracks around it. So they won't actually, they could track the Yeti if they want to, but they probably don't want to. And and uh, a slaughter. We could also have moose jaws. Um, if we wanted to put moose jaws in here early. Uh, a slaughtered uh, trapper. I think that's good. So we can hint about moose jaws. So that's kind of our random encounter, right? Uh, then when they return to Bryn Shander, um, they see the empty uh, because uh, who was it that um, Where was the sacrifice? I named I named the sacrifice guy, uh, who was actually sacrificed. Amos Donhart, right? So they go on the quest. Uh, see poor Amos Donhart at the tree. Right. So what I want to do is um, there are these things called cold light walkers. I think they are monstrosities. Un are they undead? Cold light walker. So cold light walkers are uh, humanoids who died from extreme cold whose spirits languish in the mortal world, become cold light walkers. They're god spawn horrors, right? They're powerful though, it's CR5. So they're really, really tough. They have this 25 point cold ray. Yeah, and he's not sure about says right out of the thing. So one of the things I wanna have is, you know, I wanna hint at it. So they're, they, they're on the way out, they see there's the frozen body, you know, completely frozen to the tree 
of poor Amos, right? And they go, oh, that's really sad. And then they go and they do their adventure and they come back and it's gone. And it's like, it's broken out of the ice. And if they do an investigation, they'll see like, nobody took it. It broke free. And that's because it's now a cold light walker. And then later they might see his like distinguishing tattoos on his back as he's kind of lumbering through the woods and turns and maybe hits somebody with one of those rays. Um, I want to, I want to hint at these things, right? I'm foreshadowing this stuff. So I want to foreshadow moose jaws and I want to foreshadow uh, the cold light walker. I think those are two fun things to kind of throw in this 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 early stage. Um, <clears throat> so uh, I want to do a uh, treasure wise. I would like the dwarves to offer a giant rune, and I did it for my other group, so I'm going to steal it from that. Um, no, I can't remember. So uh, I want to give them a rune of the giants. And I'm going to take it from um, Storm King's Thunder. Do, 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 do. Where is Storm King's Thunder? I'm in the wrong one. Source books. Enter Storm King's Thunder. And uh, for Storm King's Thunder, we have treasure, magic items. And I think this is where we have the... Yeah, so I want to offer a protection rune. Um, scold. So they're going to get a scold rune, right? Uh, it can make any item or armor a plus one, any weapon or armor. And can cast a shield of faith once per day. So, uh, oh, and then let's see. I've got, these are my marching order ones, and uh, I have initiative, so I don't need that. Let me delete that. So I got my marching order, and I've got my, um, the roll, so that works. Whoops. These are from, oh my God, what's going on here? There we go. So that's all set. Um, so really not a lot of monsters and stuff going on, but I want to give a skull. Uh, so basically the black iron dwarves will say we have the skull rune and we can apply it to any piece of armor or weapon that you, that you guys want. You guys choose who it is. Uh, and then we can figure that out. So pretty extensive session notes for such a small session today, but let's uh, actually look at the adventure. Oh, um, so then, uh, there's been another murder, uh, check. So, uh, options for next quest. I think there's been another murder. Maybe we'll make that the strong star for next week. So I don't think we'll worry about that now. I don't know. I don't know when I'm going to put that in. Uh, so then the quest options for next week, right? And those three options are going to be uh, Dugan's Hall, Good Mead, and um, Bremen. They get to choose which one. So, yeah, so let's look at the actual quest that we're running today, right? Like, we did all that work, but really, the adventure is uh, just a straight adventure from um, Bryn Shander, Foaming Mugs. So, Foaming Mugs is, you know, Stocky Dwarves show up, uh, Herna, Korax, and, Str and Storn all show up, say, we got jacked by a Yeti on our way from Kelvin's Karn to here, carrying a huge amount of iron, uh, our iron that we were planning to use in the smithy at Black Iron, at the Black Iron Smithy. And uh, it is our life savings and we are totally screwed without it. We are not fighters ourselves. So we were, uh, uh, we're no match for this, for this Yeti um, that destroyed us. Uh, We're no match for this Yeti that destroyed us. Um, and these bloodstones, whether they're going to be 10 gold piece, not 50 gold piece. That's madness. This this quest offered way too much money. Um, so they ask you, hey, please, we, we, we reject. We, we need somebody to go out there and just get our iron back, right? We're not asking you to fight a Yeti. 
that you know but if you can get out there and get our get our get our cart of our iron back that would be that would be awesome and i can give you each a 10 gold piece bloodstone for your for your work and you will get more importantly if you bring it back you'll get 10 percent off all of the wares that we have at our shop um uh i don't know why why does this matter a rusty iron lock and a good luck charm he lost it's ridiculous some of the stuff in there is kind of goofy um so they go out there's a potential for a blizzard i don't know if i'm going to throw the blizzard and i threw it in last time and it wasn't particularly exciting so i don't know that i'm going to use the blizzard uh they will find uh ubok the dwarf dead torn apart by a yeti they'll see that the yeti went off in one direction but it looks like somebody else hauled the, the goblin or that somebody else hauled it off small booted figures uh, then they get out there. Uh, they find that a goblin boss, uh, Isabai, is trying to grab the iron. They're having a lot of trouble getting it. It's stuck. <clears throat> it's stuck there. Uh, and they will have a big fight. Uh, the polar bears will not fight unless I'm. I'm. So I'm, I'm changing some stuff here. Um, that the polar bears are are not hostile unless they're attacked. Uh, and the goblin boss will only fight. She'll, she'll probably try to escape. Um, if things go, go badly. And, um, so then they get the ingots, they bring them back. They, they defeat the goblins. They, they bring the, they bring the ingots back and then they, um, uh, uh, and then they get involved the rest of the story. So it's a very straightforward, like, go out and get our get our iron from the goblins, right? Very straightforward kind of adventure. Uh, so that works pretty well. One interesting thing is if you go to um, Reddit, you can search for, um, uh, what is it called? Foaming mugs. And uh, people have created... Uh, battle maps for it. I think this one is the one I used, and I think it was pretty good. Yeah. So here is a cool, I'm going to save this, right? Right to my desktop. If you would like a battle map uh, for it, uh, we have a nice uh, foaming mugs battle map that we can use with our, our good friends with Albert Rodeo. So I use this for my other game, and I think they liked it. So I think I'm going to use it. Since it's only one encounter, I think I'm going to use this one, and it'll, and it'll be fine. Um, but yeah, one nice thing about running a published adventure like this is that Reddit has been very heavy in, in, in it, and I think they have maps for a lot of the encounters that don't have maps in the game. So the, the, the cartographer group that, that supports it, you can get maps uh, available for free that you can use in your in your uh, Frost Maiden game, and I plan to. Like that one. Um, I needed. I ended up needing a lot of goblins as an encounter since they provided little actual threat. Yeah, I'm not so worried about... Yeah, maybe I'll do as many as 12, because they're second level, right? So let's do our Sly Flourish uh, encounter building thing. How many goblins is right? Because I use fewer goblins, too. Uh, so we have six second level characters so that's uh that's a total of 12 12 divided by four is three um so total of three right the total cr of three goblins i believe are one quarter so you could theoretically have um and i'm doing it in waves so they're not going to face they're just going to face goblins so three, a quarter is three, six, nine. No, uh, four times, three times four is 12, right? And I just did it again. So you could have up to 12 goblins and that would be sort of a deadly, a deadly fight. Two goblins per character. Um, maybe, I'll see how I feel. It'll be eight, and I'll do somewhere between like eight to 12 goblins. Um, and that's probably a good amount of goblins, right? There is a goblin boss in there, but I don't. But it's not like the goblin boss and the goblins are all fighting together. The goblin boss is back in the cart, right? So they're, when they face the goblins, it's really going to be in waves. Uh, and if they face the goblin boss, so I probably have like 
a couple of goblins, or maybe four goblins with the goblin boss. Uh, and then another eight goblins out front, right? Um, smart tactical. These are not smart tactical goblins. They're out stuck in the snow. Um, you know, so I think that this is this is probably better. Eight goblins out front, which is going to be quick work. And then the goblin boss and four goblins, but they might try to escape. So this isn't, this is situational D&D, not a battle, right? The situation is they have to go get the cart. So they don't have to kill the goblins. They just have to get the goblins away and get the cart. And if it's easy or not, um, then then it's then it's fine. Uh, this isn't about making a a challenging battle. This is about letting the characters navigate the situation uh, to to get the result. The other thing is, it's going to take them three quests, and I'm going to let them know it's it's going to take them three quests to get to third level. So they're going to be second level for a while, right? They get. And, so, and they are going to face some tough fights later on. So I'm, I'm definitely going to be slowing down the leveling of this considerably. Like, I, 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 I expect, I want this adventure to last a long time. And it's not a particularly high-level adventure. So I would, I'm going to tell them to not, not to expect to level very quickly. That it'll be, it's going to be three, they have to complete three main quests before they, um, before they get to third level. And then it's four quests to get to fourth level. Um, so that's nine quests before they level because I'm definitely slowing down the leveling. So I think that's pretty straightforward. Uh, I think I've got everything I need to run this uh, uh, adventure. I've run it before, so it's pretty straightforward. Got a lot of material to cover, uh, but I'm interested in learning more. Spelling mistake in my title? Sunday Frost Maven. There we go. Yay. Um, I don't care that much. This is all my most, but they fixed it. So, um, yeah, so I think I've got everything I need. I'm enjoying running Frime of the Frost Maiden. Uh, there are parts of it I don't dig, but there's a lot of parts I do, and I'm having fun, and I think that's all that matters. The characters are really fun. Players are great. Uh, so we are all set. So I'm going to let it go there. Uh, next week, we will see how things went with this quest. We will see what quest they chose next, hopefully, maybe. And uh, we, will, we will continue on in our journey of Frost Maiden. So I'm going to thank everybody for coming today. Uh, always a great time to go on Twitch and, and hang out and chat with you all. And I will see you all next Sunday. Thank you very much. Get out there and play some D&D.